Welcome to Hear God Every Day. I'm your host, Sarah Witten. Get comfortable, open your heart, and let's talk about how we can be more sensitive to God's voice in our everyday life. Welcome back to Hear God Every Day. I am so excited this week um, to welcome Joel Yunt from Spirit Fuel. Um, Joel is just, he has an incredible humility of heart. And, you know, as I'd mentioned, kind of leading up to this week and to um, these last couple months, I've been talking about, you know, how I would be inviting folks to come into this time who um, really have spoken into my life, um, as well as just provide resources that I think help you hear the Lord in a better way, because that's what we're all on this journey for. Um, so specifically, um, spirit fuel, it's, um, an amazing resource. It's something that I, I can say, honestly, you know, throughout the day, I, um, will check my email and sometimes a word will come through on spirit fuel. That just is exactly the word I'm needing to hear. Um, and then also Joel has recently put out a book called speaking life to the nations. And, um, it is an amazing book in the sense that you can read it multiple times. You can read little sections at a time. It really ties um, just intercession and um, the heart of, you know, hearing God for different situations. And I happened to pick it up and um, be reading it. And it was this time where I was really praying for my family. It had been kind of a weird time of like sickness for my kids and um, just a lot of heaviness in the nation and a lot of, you know, just sickness in, in general. And so um, I was, I was opening to it and it was a chapter on praying for your family. And really there's just so many different sections that target, target different areas um, that are in this book and it's a great thing to check out. I'm going to put links to that in the show notes. Um, now Joel has a website, it's his name. So joelunt.com. And that's a place where if after this time together, you're thinking, okay, I want more resources. I want to, you know, kind of see, um, what's coming out or, or get more. That's a great place, uh, to start to, you know, get the, the variety of things that God is kind of doing through his life. Um, so as I think of Joel, Um, you know, when I was first kind of praying about who God would kind of invite into this time, um, you know, I feel like God has really placed you, Joel, as like a, a gatekeeper, almost like a a gatekeeper to the prophetic, um, because there is a stewardship of hearing his voice where, you know, you're not just hearing his voice for yourself, but you're also kind of, um, because you put out amazing writing and amazing articles, but also, it's kind of hearing the voice of God in different people's writings and being able to recognize like, okay, this, this is sounding like um, what the Lord is saying now. Um, and so with that role of, you know, kind of that, that prophetic gatekeeper role, it takes a lot of, you know, ability to hear the Lord. And I'm interested in kind of hearing like, you know, how did you start on your prophetic journey? You know, what, what's the ways that you kind of began connecting to the Lord? Yeah. Um, I think it's through, through everyday life situations. Um, I, I find myself receiving article submissions week after week and, um, the very exact moment they come in, um, it's, it's actually something that I, I may be going through or facing. And so, um, I think, I think it really started when, um, I I began to reach out and that sounds kind of like a, a basic term for people, um, listening or watching today. But, um, a lot of times we discover when, um, people receive a prophetic word over their life, um, or ministry, um, the, the truth is not everyone that takes steps in the natural to climb that ladder to see part of the, our fulfillment come to pass. And so when I say the term reach out, um, that, that, could, that could mean um, reaching out to people we see online. 
It could mean um, specific names that the Lord reveals to us in a dream Mm -hmm. or um, someone we may come across in a meeting or at church. Um, When we begin to reach out and say, hey, you know, what what are you hearing from the Lord? You know, Mm -hmm. I'm interested in what you're hearing right now from God. Um, There begins to build a momentum in our life where all of a sudden we do not feel alone or isolated because a lot of people, um, they don't, I don't think they try on purpose to do this, but Mm -hmm. they, they actually get in a pattern of, um, isolation and being alone and they, they fail to do a crucial step in their walk with the Lord. And that is reach out. God wants us to reach out to other people because we don't have the whole formula. We don't have everything Mm -hmm. it takes for our personal prophetic words to come to pass. Um, You know, there's moments in each of our lives, I believe, where God will open a, a, a small door here and a small door here, and it's it's almost like a a test of faith where God monitors if we go through those initial doors, you know, are we going to follow through? And then he'll add, he'll op- open more doors for us, mm. you know, if we're obedient with the small doors. And mm-hmm. so reaching out is such a huge thing, I think, that I've learned in my own life. Um, <laughs> and I, I can even give you a specific example in the natural where yeah, this has just yeah. happened. Okay. Um, so a week ago, I received a, uh, a message out of the blue from a prophetic voice. I had not really communicated with them in, in six months. And, oh. um, I was just thinking the day prior to this happening, I thought, you know, I haven't heard of, um, her name's Joellen Stevens. I haven't heard okay. from her yeah, yeah. in a long, long time. and. You know, I was just thinking that. I didn't say anything. And lo and behold, the next day, I get this message from Joellen. Wow. And she says, Joel, I had a dream a few nights ago, and I saw you on TBN getting connected to a mic, getting to prepare for an interview on TBN. Wow. And... um she did not know that I was um, beginning to get invitations to be on um, two to three television doors that had just opened for me that wow. I had not I had not pursued or you know try to make happen. And um, so, based off of that small amount of information about the dream she had, what did I do with that? Well, I took a step of faith. Mm-hmm. I Put a book, putting a book in the mail and, and send it, sending it to TBN. And, you know, that's a simple, small act of faith to do in the natural. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that's how God speaks to me, you know, to, to me and, and to many other people. We have to um, take acts of faith based on what we hear and other people hear. And this this does not just apply to uh, people in ministry. If you're a real estate agent, if you sell homes, if you sell property, there are divine signs from God that He can reveal to you, um, whether it's in your mail or someone calls you up and say, "Hey, I know a neighbor who's trying to sell their home. Here's their name. Here's their contact info." Mm. And so it's like the Lord brings us these. Um, ingredients and these mm-hmm. tips, but we have a responsibility to reach out and follow up and do our part in the natural. Um, a lot of us would just like, you know, everything to fall from the sky and <laughs> be orchestrated for us, right. but it takes following up. It takes stepping mm-hmm. out and saying yes. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why um, dreams and visions are so powerful, because when we have a dream from God, or when we write down a vision, like we have an idea 
for to build something, to create mm-hmm. something. We can see it in our mind clear, mm-hmm. but it takes that act of faith to begin to write down, okay, what do we need to do? How do we go from here? And right. I think people will be surprised at how quickly they can see things begin to happen in the natural when they follow through what God's trying to bring to bring them because he wants to help us, mm-hmm. but we have to do our part and begin to reach out. And I think reaching out right now with everything going on in the world, mm-hmm. that is the most prophetic act of faith we can do um, right. as opposed to just trying to get another personal word about what to do. Start taking acts of faith and that will begin to manifest God's plan for our lives. You know, the thing that stood out to me as you were talking, there are two things actually, but the first thing being, you know, I I think you're right that so many of us, when we're looking to get a word from the Lord, we think of, you know, okay, I'm going to shut things out. I'm going to get in my, you know, quiet spot in my prayer closet. I'm just going to hear from the Lord. But oftentimes, you know, he created the body so that, you know, he's going to use all those pieces and, you know, hearing from each other and, um, kind of checking what we're hearing with, you know, the things that are happening in our lives with the opportunities God's putting in front of us with the people who, you know, we're hearing from and those, those kind of prophetic voices that we know are, you know, in tune with the Holy spirit that are, are speaking around us. Um, and the enemy would love, as you said, to get us isolated and to, you know, keep us kind of in our own personal, like turned in position, just hearing for ourselves, but there's so much interconnectedness in the body in just hearing from him. And, um, so reaching out and connecting, I think that's huge. That's so big. Yeah. And then the second thing that you mentioned, the open doors, um, it's funny. Cause as I was praying into this time and into, um, you know, just us getting to talk, um, I said, okay, God, you know, what, what do you want me to ask about? You know, what, what do you want to speak about? And he gave me the word open doors and, um, you know, how, all these new opportunities that are happening for, for each and every one of us, you know, God is orchestrating new opportunities in each of our lives. Um, but you know, how do we navigate listening to the Lord and moving through these open doors because, you know, doors will open, but you know, how do we know, okay, we, this is an opportunity or how do you know, you know, this is an opportunity that, is from the Lord. I'm moving forward on it. Um, versus something that you're either creating by your own strength or something, you know, that is, you know, not from the Lord. How do you navigate open doors? I think that's a great question. Um, I, my, my view of this is from experience. I I believe we need both. I believe there are some doors that there is a level of work on our part that we have to do. Um, but there's also a part on the Lord where he will also open doors that we don't see coming. Mm. And so, um, I'll give you a great example of this in the natural. Um, this past weekend, I just returned from, uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, Mm -hmm. and a door opened to, um, share and speak at a Amish church gathering. Wow. Now, I didn't I didn't try to um plan that or orchestrate that. My natural thinking would be um how are they going to receive the message I even put forth? Like mm-hmm. if I start talking about dreams or visions or how are they going to react? Am I even going to be accepted? Right. You know. <laughs> and so that's that's a great example of a door mm-hmm that I probably would never try to pry open. <laughs> right. But right. the Lord, the Lord had a plan. And long story short, um, I spoke some uh Saturday evening at the mm-hmm. at the Amish church gathering and um it was very well received. Um wow. come to find out they were actually familiar with hearing about dreams and interesting uh, mm-hmm. prayer and intercession. And 
before I know it, I, I looked at the table in the back where the books are located available mm-hmm. for purchase and all my books sold out that I had there. Um, wow. my new book, speaking life to the nation, um, they were just gone minutes after the meeting. And I'm thinking to myself, I didn't even think that they would be open to the book. Like I don't, and so we really, with the Lord, in terms of open doors, there are some things that we just don't plan. You know, there's just mm. things that we don't expect. And it would actually be tempting for me to say no in the beginning. Mm. Like, I'm not going there because, you know, I could say, well, I don't think that they would accept me or receive what I have to say. That would be an easy thing to do for people, um, but I I kind of went there by faith. I participated by faith. I gave a, a quick word, and um, come to find out, they were joyful. They were wow. receptive, and so we just don't know, you know, when God opens a door, we have to really have faith and trust God. Mm-hmm. Because there are going to be times when we just don't know the outcome of something, right. you know, we don't know how all the times, how it's going to play out. But I just got to tell you, they were some of the nicest, kind people. I feel like I got, there was more response there than in some other churches I've been in. There was wow. more like, amen, you know, clapping, yeah. <laughs> participation. God knew. And so yeah. we just don't know all the time the the outcome. And I think mm. we just have to trust God. And obviously, if if someone doesn't feel peace about a door, mm. you know, they shouldn't walk through it. But right. um, I think when God opens a door like that, we, we have to trust and not hold back in fear. because. Mm. Um, he has surprises in store. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. And I'm hearing is don't, don't overanalyze the door, just, you know, hearing from the Lord and then partnering that action with it. Um, you know, you mentioned your book and I think, um, in your book is a lot of great kind of ties to different things that are going on in the world and the nation right now and intercession and intercession is something that is so closely tied to hearing the voice of the Lord, because, you know, it is hearing God is that conversation of, of hearing from him. And then also our prayers and those things combining to, you know, really make things happen in heaven and earth. And so, um, you know, in being from Texas and in light of kind of recent events, I know that you have a section on, you know, praying for schools. And so anybody who's listening, who is, who is interested in that, you know, and praying it over your kids and all of that, um, that's definitely something to check out in the book. Um, but kind of speak to how you, how God kind of put it on your heart to connect, you know, um, intercession to these different areas of, of, of the nation and, um, you know, how we can kind of speak God's will over these areas through intercession and through hearing him. Yeah, absolutely. I think the beginning of this year, um, for 2022, I really, I began to be exposed to something that I never, um, really came across before. Mm -hmm. Um, someone introduced me to something called Midnight Prayer. Mm -hmm. And um, this is an online gathering, Monday through Friday. Um, There's there's an apostle and a pastor from the state of New Jersey that I've been following. And so every night he has this 12 a.m. to 2 a.m. prayer. And um, it's totally led by the Spirit. There's no agenda. There's no Let's try to plan it, go this way. It's, you know, God interrupts it all the time. And so since the beginning of the year, and even last year, I've I've come to find out there are very specific things that were coming forth Mm -hmm. during this midnight prayer, um, specific things for the nation to look out for, um, uh, even more specific things about 
human trafficking and where we would see um, things to be uncovered. Mm -hmm. And weeks later, sometimes the next day, I would see it happen in the news headlines. Wow. And so I began to think, wow, this is different. I'm not used to this type of format where a week or two later, I'm hearing this and then Mm. bam, there it is in the headlines. And I'm going, more people really need to um, take notice of these things and be aware. And I began to hear things about schools um, specifically coming, you know, to to pray for. And I I think, though, it it takes you by surprise when you actually see it happen in the natural. Like, you're still in a state of shock. Like, how could this happen, you know? Mm-hmm. But um, you know, I feel like I feel like we're in a time right now where each individual has to ask the Lord where we want to be, you know, where mm-hmm. He has placed us, because we don't know. Right. We don't know what could take place ten minutes from now mm-hmm. in a store. It, you know, we just don't know. And so now more than ever, that's why it's crucial we have to hear the voice of God. Yeah. And we have to be ready and we have to be alert. Mm-hmm. And um, another thing is um, the power of, of declarative prayer out loud with our mouth. Mm-hmm. There's something about that that gets inside our spirit that yeah. when we hear our own voice, a greater level of faith arises and we even begin to believe the report of the Lord mm-hmm. um, as opposed to just praying quietly or silently, when we hear our own prayer that's coming out loud, um, our, the, the confidence inside of us begins to rise and elevate, and the, it just grows. And I've, I've seen in my own life, things begin to happen and take place mm-hmm. because we're believing. We're not just saying things. We're actually believing and taking it to heart. And so. Um, yeah, I have this section in the book. It's called Speaking Life Over Your Local Schools. And mm-hmm. everything that's just happened and taken place, it's so timely for people right now. Um, it's really a call. It's really a prayer alert to be mm-hmm. on guard for the local schools in your in our area right now. And um, if it's okay with you, I'd love to read this portion. Absolutely, yeah. Um, just to get it out there. Um, So, Heavenly Father, I thank you for the schools that are Mm -hmm. local in my area. Mm -hmm. Right now, we come into agreement and we choose to decree and declare rivers of life into every student, teacher, Mm -hmm. staff member that is involved in the educational system. I call forth a powerful revelation of your love to overflow each of them so that they would begin to impart your love and also your wisdom onto every student. Mm -hmm. Today, we are choosing to call forth the angels to be sent forth according to your will and to bring forth and establish protection for every student and staff member in my local school system. Heavenly Father, any and all needs that my local schools have that are in need of, we ask that you grant your favor for provision Mm -hmm. for every need to be met. Last but not least, Lord, we ask that your presence would flow through each school in my local area that would impact future generations for your kingdom. We call forth light and life into this very important mission field of our education system. Amen. And I just believe as people begin to really take action, you know what I love about this book that I'm hearing from people? It's not just information. It's application. It's something that you apply. Right. And, you know, what What good is a book or anything, really, if we just read it, but we're not applying it? Mm-hmm. And it's same with the Word of God, with the Bible. If we just read it, but if we don't apply what's in there, it's not going to do much. It's not going to do much for us. Right. And so um, the Lord just really put it on my heart to get a resource out there like this that people can read and apply in their Mm -hmm. daily life 
And they, they begin to see things shift and happen because um, when I started to decree and declare out loud, that's when I began to see things shift and see mm-hmm. things change. And this weekend, let me tell you, at this gathering, <laughs> there were, um, I want to say, the five to seven people that came from out of state. And so they were not necessarily um, part of this gathering. They, they mm-hmm. heard about the meeting, but they came and they were powerful intercessors. I mean, they talked about how the Lord guides them to certain roads and highways and wow. they target that in prayer. And I mean, really serious people of prayer. Wow. And I thought to myself, wow, this, this, they were like a blueprint for me mm-hmm. to where we all should be headed because, um, you know, just the stories of how people found out about the, the meetings this weekend, it's unbelievable. Right. Um, one person said they, they found out they they put in a soaking music CD. They heard a website at the end of the CD that transitioned them to a website where they found out about the meeting wow. and just bizarre stuff that does not make any sense Only God. Um, yeah. whatsoever. And so we have to be led by the Lord in all things. And um, it's time for us to rise up and take authority and speak life to our schools, our neighborhoods, mm-hmm. our community, um, our family, and even in government right now. Right. Um, you know, to to influence godly values because, um, you know, I I recently heard a speaker somewhere towards the end of his message. Um, I'm not going to name names or anything, but. Sure. He said something that kind of shocked me. Mm-hmm. I was kind of taken back by it. He he actually said that something like it it doesn't matter or God doesn't care who's in the White House or who's in authority. Wow. And I said it does matter. Yes. <laughs> right. It matters because each leader has a belief, belief systems. And right. of course when they campaign before they get to a position, they make known and clear where they stand. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, based off of that information, it's kind of like a heads up of what's to come if they get elected. And so I just thought to myself, no, it does matter. It matters as believers that we do get involved and we take a stand. And I think right now, this nation, the United States, we're on a journey where I think in the past, the enemy has tried to um, make us believe that things are over, things are finished mm-hmm. for America. But as we see in recent events, the the tide, I believe, is beginning to turn. Mm-hmm. Um, look what just has happened with the leak coming out of the Supreme Court right, um, regarding right. the possibility of Roe v. Wade being overturned. And so huge. there are things that are coming in the nation right now that I think people will look back and go, wow, I never saw that coming. Mm -hmm. And so if this is happening with the Supreme Court right now, the question is, what else do we not see coming that God has in store up his sleeve? And so we need to rise up in hope and faith and just believe and declare that God is not done with America. There's bright days ahead. Absolutely. Amen. Um, I think really an antidote right now for hopelessness. So if you're listening right now, when you're feeling hopeless in any area of life, an antidote for that hopelessness is realizing that our prayers and our declarations have that power to shift things. We have the power to be a part of what God's doing and to partner with it. And while, you know, we may never grasp the entirety of all that God has moving behind the scenes, um, it's so powerful to have a tool like speaking life to the nations to be able to say, I'm going to take this category, take this sector that I feel hopeless about, whether it's governments, whether it's schools, whether it's families. Um, and I am going to get my weapon of prayer out and I'm going to start praying over it. And you can, you know, add your specific things into 
that kind of tool and that format and just start getting it out and praying and declaring and then being encouraged by the changes and the testimonies that you see. So I think that is huge. It's um, a, a, a great way to turn a what seems like hopeless situation um, back around and really see the truth, which is that, you know, ultimately God has bigger things in store and that we are we are able to pray and declare the will of the Lord, which always trumps any power of the enemy. Amen. So Joel, um, I am so thankful that you joined us today. Um, I feel like this is just, just the beginning. Um, there's so much more richness, you know, that he has to offer. And so definitely go to the show notes, um, check out his website, um, get those tools to kind of take your hearing to the next step. Um, but Joel, before we close, I would love to just have you pray, um, over anybody listening right now, um, you know, just about hearing the Lord in their life. Um, but also, you know, kind of the, the things that God has, has put on your heart for this time today. Amen. Well, heavenly father, we just come into agreement today. We thank you for every listener. We thank you for every viewer right now. Um, we thank you that a confidence is beginning to arise in their soul, their spirit, mind, and body mm. that is letting them know that um, this is not the end, that God still has a purpose for the nation. He has a purpose for their life. Um, just the fact that they're breathing right now proves that there is a mighty plan and a mighty work that God is beginning to unleash in their life today. And I just pray and come against all doubt and unbelief mm -hmm. that would try to rob and steal the prophetic promises that have been declared over their life. And we just thank you, God, that um, you are getting this revelation out to the masses right now about speaking life, not just to the nation, but our own lives as well. When we begin to hear our own voice, we begin to hear the life-giving promises in your word, the Bible, God, that um, hope and expectation begins to birth forth um, promises and manifestations in the natural that we never saw coming. And mm -hmm. so we thank you, God, for your word. We thank you for your promises. We thank you that you are the God of the impossible that is willing to take over when we can't go another step. And we just pray healing. We pray life. We pray for supernatural divine interventions for people that are watching this today. And we just come into agreement with this prayer right now. And we just say, Lord, have your will be done according to your will in heaven, God, over the nation, over our families, and just, God, things that you can do that we can't make happen in our own strength. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. Well, um, thank you for tuning in with us this week and just getting to be a part of this conversation. And, um, I know if you're listening to this right now, that God has something in this podcast for you. So, um, this was just a, a timely kind of now word and, um, I'll be praying this week just for those seeds that have been planted today that God can um, kind of grow those into action like we talked about. And um, we're so thankful for Joel joining us and we're excited to uh, dive into some new things next week. So thank you. And we'll see you same time next week. Thanks for spending time with me today. If God spoke to you through this time, visit arrowsofzion.com for writings, resources, and ways to partner with me in reaching the unreached with the gospel. You can also find Arrows of Zion on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. Have a blessed day, and let's meet here next week.